Hey everyone, Cat Goblin and Martin here, and as you can tell by the title of this video, I'm back with another Scooby Doo Night of 100 Frights review. I reviewed so much of this game, but there's just one important thing to review before the finale, and that is your allies. You know, the people that help you, sometimes depend on you for help, or provide moral support. I know that in some games you don't really rely on your allies, but in this game they're very crucial because without their help, you wouldn't have made it far. So as always, let's dive straight into this review. The first people that we should talk about are Velma, Daphne, and Fred. When you arrive at Mystic Manor, they enter the house, and get captured by the Mastermind, who spreads them out in different locations. And then it's up to you to save them. Velma is found in a cage, in a dark and stormy night part 3, and she's being guarded by the Black Knight. Once you defeat the Black Knight, you can reach Velma's cage and save her. Ultimately, the fall breaks Velma's lenses. Luckily, Scooby finds some new ones, but then these lenses make Velma see the creeper, and so she runs away. Right. The second person you save is Daphne, and she's found in Gloom and Doom Down the Tomb Part 3. So the Mastermind tries to run away with her, but Scooby trips, making him do a spin dash like Sonic, bumps into them, and saves her. Too bad it isn't an attack though, because that would be pretty OP. Anyways, the Mastermind is fed up with all the shenanigans, and summons in the Green Ghost. Now Daphne helps you by running to any of the three coffins that you stand near, and opens them, so that you can ground bound the pressure plate to suck the ghost in. After the battle you meet Holly, acquire the umbrella, and once again your allies disappear on you. Then we have Fred who is found in Shiver Your Timber Skibby Part 2. Fred is stuck in this life preserver. Fortunately, this lever can bring him down. Unfortunately, the mastermind pops up behind him and puts a barrel over his head. During the whole boss fight against Captain Redbeard, Fred is pretty much wobbling around in the background, but after the fight you get to save him, for real this time. Velma and Shaggy appear, Fred finds out about the Creeper times 2 in Velma's glasses, and they meet you at the super secret lab. The whole gang show up in Mastermind and Mask Part 2, where they warn you about the massive pool of acid, and the Mastermind, who is somewhat anticipating for you. Honestly, this scene here reminds me of the last cutscene in Sonic Heroes, where you know it's all about teamwork and stuff, but the gang do use the hologram to scare the Mastermind off his perch. So our next ally, and also major enemy, is Holly, slash hologram, slash the Mastermind. You meet her in front of Mystic Manor, and you run into her again in Clamor in the Manor Part 1, Gloom and Doom down the tomb part 3, and a Mastermind Unmasked part 2. When you first enter Mystic Manor, Holly is locked in the hallway. Once you unlock the door, Holly greets you, explains about the Mastermind, what happened to the gang, and also gives you the map. After when you take out the green ghost, Holly pops out the bushes with an invention crate full of odd inventions, and the umbrella of course. But then Daphne sits on this tombstone which activates the platform to flip over, making them both disappear. Hologram Holly appears in Mastermind of Mask Part 2, where in the cutscene you can see her hand pass through the rail. Now at first it looks like a glitch, but it's actually part of the story. And I'll talk about Holly's whole scheme in the final review. Up next is the Groundskeeper, or also known as John Knotts, who everyone thought was super suspicious because he somehow appears ahead of you. But seriously though, this guy is a legend. 
When you first start the game and explore, you can actually first meet him in Mystic Playground. As you interact with him here, he pretty much acts as a guide, telling you about how to play the game, and in some places he can provide hints. After when you save Holly, he appears outside in the manor where he gives you the shovel so you can dig up the key. If you stand near him, he'll talk to you, and let me tell you, talking to him is way less awkward than talking to someone in Sonic 06. I wondered where the key is to the gate, huh? Well, so am I. I'm pretty sure it's buried around here somewhere, but you'll need a shovel. Here, take this and get to work. The groundskeeper also appears in Shock on the Dock Part 1, where he warns you not to fall in the water. He'll briefly appear in Part 2 and tells you to retrieve the double jump springs. Then when you come back, he'll mention about the galoshes used to cross tar-stained areas. He briefly appears in On Edge in the Hedge Part 2. When you talk to him, he gives you the Lampshade and Bunny Slippers invention. He also seems pretty aware about the zombie hiding in the urn, but he's not too scared about it, and he'll kind of stay there forever until you grab the invention. In All Scares Upstairs Part 1, he can be seen near the shortcut door. He gives a hint about floating and going down which way Part 1, then by the end he congratulates you and tells you to collect everything that you missed. One interesting thing to add is that you can actually use your inventions on your allies, and they're pretty much immune. You can spit gum or bash into them as many times as you want, but they'll never be affected by it. And Scooby does say sorry or excuse me when bumping into them. The next legendary ally who is pretty important in the story is Professor Alexander Graham. You see him on a monitor after when you defeat the Black Knight, and you properly meet him at the end. What makes him so important is that he's the one who made the inventions. Without all these gadgets lying around, we probably wouldn't have made it past the second room of the manor. In the story, it is said that the mastermind kidnapped him and he's stuck in a flash tube, but more on that in the future. Professor Alexander Graham is truly the GOAT, and let's move on to our next ally. Hello! I'm Professor Alexander Graham, <laughs> and you found one of my amazing invention cranes. Let's see now, what's in this one? Uh, oh, here we go. Well, inside this box, you should either find my automated herring scraper or my anti-stick galoshes. Oh, looks like it's the galoshes. With these, you can walk across any sticky surface and not get stuck. And best of all, <laughs> they're banana flavored. Oh, banana. <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> these might be useful. Birds are really interesting animals, and there's so many different species of them. But the question is, which bird is the ultimate legend? And the answer is the pelican. This rare bird can be found in Shock on the Dock Parts 1 and 2, and in Fear in the Pier Part 3. When the pelican comes close, jump and grab onto its legs, and it will give you a lift, so that you can grab all the goodies along the way. The pelican even gives Shaggy a ride in Shock on the Dock Part 2. <laughs>
There are so many enemies in the game such as the Headless Spectre, the Tar Monster, and of course the Creeper, but one enemy that stands out from the rest of them is the Witch. The Witch has a broomstick or flying which makes it really difficult to attack her on the ground, and she's got a magic wand so that she can do hologram magic and also to zap you into dust. But did you know that the Witch appears as an ally? Alright, let me explain. In a Dark and Stormy Night Part 2, you have to chase off Dronmo to save Shaggy. Get him in the three up here, stand on this pressure plate, and the witch will appear in thin air, carrying Shaggy and then dropping him into a chimney, so that you can get all the keys. Who would have thought that a common enemy can actually help you progress? Even when you enter the part in free roam, the witch will always give Shaggy a ride. What a legend. <laughs> <laughs> this wouldn't be considered an ally, but I might as well point them out. It's the background of laughter. Whenever you run around, use the helmet, ground pound randomly, or just grab onto a swing, the people in the background will laugh. Even if you're in the creepiest room, they'll still laugh, but the laughter really feels like you're in a Scooby-Doo episode. <laughs> Alright, so you know how I said that the Groundskeeper, Professor, Pelican, and Witcher are legends? Well, scratch that, because the only true legend in this game is Shaggy. I would show off all of his appearances now, but I don't really want this review to be too long, so instead I'll do a dedicated review on him soon, because let's be honest, Shaggy deserves his own review. Anyways, Shaggy is always there for you whenever you need help to progress further into a part. He's so powerful that when you carry him in this hallway, the zombies can't see you, but instead sense you. Even playing around with cheats and shock on the dock part 2, the caveman and sea creature are so blind. Just look at these clips here. Oh no! It's a zombie! <laughs> Well everyone, that is pretty much going to be it for this review. I've showed off all of your allies in the game, but don't worry, Shaggy's review will be coming soon. The next two reviews will be quite promising though. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the review. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Cream went into this weird looking castle and she hasn't come back out. Will you go in there with me to look for her? <laughs> hey, look! It's a balloon! Hey, Shadow! The black creatures have infiltrated my castle! I'd like you to go and light those giant lanterns! They're part of my special defenses! Shadow, how about using that? Whoa!
all who oppose me. Maybe you should try breaking hey, uh, this. Oh, man! It's a dead end! Chaos Blast! There's another stone lantern! If you want to stay clear of trouble, then stay away from that doctor. Hmm, perfect. 